All right, when it comes to Nokia, I know a lot of people say their first phone, especially if you're a millennial or even older, was the Nokia 3310. Now for me, the Nokia G20 phone I'm gonna be reviewing today is the first Nokia phone I've ever had. Now my first smartphone, or actually I should say first phone period, was a flip phone from Motorola that came with one of those contract plans when those used to exist where they gave you four or five phones for the whole family if you were a new subscriber or user or whatever and you got a new number. So for me, that was my first phone, period. I don't even know what it was called. I actually wish I still had that thing, but it probably wouldn't even work today. So today with the Nokia G20, I wanna kinda of give my experience on another budget smartphone, but also just what I think about Nokia phones, period. So, all right, let's get into the review and I hope this helps. Now, I don't wanna to get too nerdy on the specs of this phone, although I will have them in the description below if you wanna check out all the specs. I'll have them there. And first thing I wanna go over is design and build quality. So with design, only thing I would change is the plastic on the back. I wish it was just a solid piece, kinda of like the iPhone 5C of matte black or matte white. I would have really loved the matte white if it was a solid piece like the iPhone 5C. That would have really made this phone truly not feel cheap or think it was a $200 phone. Besides that, it doesn't look cheap at all. You know, it's just the backing that's weird. The front, I like the teardrop notch, how the bottom of the chin just says Nokia, it's not too thick, not too in the way. And the side buttons, the home button, the volume button, and the Google Assistant button on the left, all those felt really good, didn't feel cheap or weird when you clicked them, except for the accidental touches with the fingerprint scanner. That was a little too sensitive. You know, it's just every time I put the phone in my pocket or in my coat when I go on my evening walks, I just felt like it would unlock the phone too much or I would feel the phone uh, phone vibrate because it felt like it was trying to unlock the phone and recognize my fingerprint. And so leading into the display, with it being 6.52 inches at 720 by 1600 on the pixel count, I would say the only time you're really suffering, I guess, or noticing something is when it comes to photos and video. You know for sure you're not gonna really see the true quality of that video or that photo until you put it on a computer or your TV display or something with better resolution before you truly see what it, and I did this on my computer for this review. I was like, wow, the photos and video look better on my computer, on my MacBook or even my Surface Laptop Go than my phone. And that's the only disappointment you're gonna get is photos and video, especially on social media. But with watching content on Netflix, on YouTube, on Hulu, Discovery Plus, if we're talking this is your phone you're watching content on, it's just fine. All right, this sounds funny, but let's get into a speaker test and a call quality test. All right, this is what the phone sounds like with the microphone quality up to my ear. And now I just switched it to speakerphone to see what that sounds like too. So mic test one, two, mic test one, two. Sometimes people are less open with you and they're more open on social media. So if I see from someone's post that they're posting something depressive or sad every day, don't just like or comment on their post. Just pick up the phone and call them up, right? It's like actually giving you information. I struggled a lot with the earpiece in phone calls because the first time I got a phone call was at the grocery store and I barely heard the other person on the other line. And I had to keep hitting the volume rocker up thinking it just wouldn't turn up, but it just didn't turn up. <laughs> you know, it was very quiet and it was kind of a struggle. So, and that was just at a grocery store. Now with battery life, I would say, I mean, for sure it's an A+, but probably my favorite thing about the phone, simply because I barely had to think about it. I mean, I've gone two days without charging it and it still had 50% or even more after a few hours of use, like three to four hours of use in a day. Like today, three hours of talk time, two hours of social media, YouTube time, and it's still at 68%. Now with the cameras, and I will let them speak for themselves by showing you enough photos and video examples without any editing being done to them, with there being a 48 megapixel main camera, five megapixel ultra wide, two megapixel macro and depth camera. And of course you can record in HDR panorama and the video is 1080p at 30 frames per second. The selfie camera is 1080p at 30 frames per second and an eight megapixel wide camera. So with all those specs, for me with this being a $199 phone, the only issue I had was the processing speed of after taking a photo or a video. 
but there was no lag during the experience, if that makes sense. And again, let's just let the photos and videos speak for themselves. <laughs> Here's a front-facing camera test if you're going to do a selfie or use this for a TikTok or anything like that. Uh, obviously, just in my bedroom, you see my clothes in the background and stuff. But this is the natural lighting. Uh, I want to just keep natural lighting as much as possible because most people don't have artificial lights. So this is a selfie video test. All right, here's a video test and mic test. Unedited, nothing fancy here in 1080p of me showing... Um, let me see if it can focus in on different things that I bring into the shot that are near. This is just on my desk too. So there's the box. And the lighting's actually really good as far as natural light goes. I have no artificial lights or anything. And then also let me just kind of, this is actually an anchor headset I'm going to be reviewing. Uh, it's a really good headset, so stay tuned for that review. But just a quick test of what the video quality may look like. Now, last thing I want to talk about is the speed, processing power, and overall software experience. I won't get too much in depth on Android 11. That would have to be a whole different review given that I'm mainly an iOS user. So, you know, I won't talk about that. But the speed of this phone, I would say the only problem I had was when I tried playing heavy, intensive games like Call of Duty, which is my favorite mobile game to play right now. I love that game. And I struggled with this phone. I mean, it's just not even going to be close to using, you know, an iPhone 13 Pro or something better with processing power. But it does the job when it comes to multitasking. So watching YouTube while browsing Instagram or looking at TikTok or whatever it is, you know, b basic apps like that, just fine. Barely any lag. And even when it comes to uploading videos for TikTok or even on YouTube, which the last YouTube short, I tested it. Things like that did fine, where I'm like, okay, for it being a budget phone, I, I expected it to take a few minutes longer than normal, you know, that kind of stuff. But it still did the job without crashing the phone. I just only struggled with gaming. So another way to put it is you'll have a good time with this phone as a single use phone, one app at a time, you know, but if you're expecting to play heavy duty games while watching a YouTube video in the background because you have YouTube premium, I wouldn't push it unless you want to see some serious lag. Now, using one app like Masterclass or, you know, multitasking using Amazon Prime while watching a YouTube video or looking at Instagram while, you know, I don't know, learning a Spanish lesson if you want to do both of those at the same time, just fine. So with all that being said, what I recommend this phone for $199, I actually bought it for $179. Yes, if you just want a simple phone, if you're like, okay, I, I need an additional business phone, um, you know, I'm low on funds, I may have a computer, and I just need a new smartphone, but situations like that is where I would recommend this phone, but if we're talking, your phone is your only thing, that's where I go, well, you know, I, I think you should go with something more higher end, maybe three, four, five hundred dollar range like the OnePlus 8T even, or if you really can spend the money, just get one of the top of the line phones. You know, go with something way more advanced if it, we're talking it's your only device because the video editing, uploading, and playing heavy intensive games is where this phone struggled the most. So if you're expecting to do a lot of social media content creation, it's not the phone. You know, if this is a business phone, absolutely it's a reliable and good phone. So I hope that helps give it into perspective of my experience and how I would recommend this phone. So hopefully that helped. I, I truly hope it did because it is a good phone. Just, it just really depends on your situation. So thanks for watching this video. Really hope it helped. And if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see y'all on the next one.